it's Alex and I'm here in my hallway. I have some new pole, um, stone chip paint. <laughs> Ow. That I bought. <laughs> Why did I do that? Or how did I do it? Uh, I bought this from Middleton's Paints and Panels. And uh, I've already been out and put some etch primer over the rust killer. So I had the rust killer on overnight. Then I went out and I scuffed it back with a Scotch Bright pad, degreased it, and then used about, I think it was four coats of etch primer. So today I'm going to go out there and I'm going to give it a little scuff down with the old Scotch Bright. And we're going to use this stone chip paint. Arlo now has no legs. Where's your legs? Hmm? You like the new doormat, do you? Who parked that rover like that? It's abandoned. Oh, look, he's got legs. Hello. Are you a good boy? What have you got on today? Chickens? He's got his chicken scarf on. Mm. Right, mate. You going in? I'm going in. I forgot my tea. This is your life. No, uh, <laughs> this is the inside. I have painted it hammerite purple, as it's always been for the past uh, 12 years or so. So you can see here, it's all been seam sealed up all around the edge, and then I've hammerited it. Now I think I'm going to put one more coat of hammerite because I can still see a bit of seam sealer poking through. It's thin in places, so another coat of purple in there today. And we'll do that in between coats of stone chip. Here is the inner wing. Oh, I'll get down. So you can see we've got etch primer concentrating on the, the bare metal areas. All seam sealed up. Happy days. This is the stuff I use, Scotch Bright. Because if you use sandpaper on this, you risk taking it back, you know, to bare metal on the edges and things. And we're not we're not looking for a nice finish under here. We're just looking for it to be protected. So on this occasion, I'll just scuff it all over. You know, give it a good rub, and it just takes the sort of gloss off the primer so then the stone chip will stick better try and protect my lungs a little bit if i can <laughs> now i've finished scuffing it all up we now want to use the Degreaser. Sorry, I just thought there was a bit of dust on there. I've got this degreaser um, or panel wipe just to make sure, you know, it sort of helps keep all the dust out of it. Not that it really matters under here, I say, because we're not looking for a good finish. We're looking for good um, contact, basically. We want the paint to stick and stay stuck. Because <laughs> if you don't do all this prep work, the paint will just fall off again. We don't want that. I should have took that rubber bung out, but it's absolutely solid. I ain't replacing it. It can just stay there and get painted. <laughs> I'm pretty much ready to paint now. But I'm just going to mask off some bits because there's obviously the depots that will need welding. So I don't want to put fresh paint near to where we're going to be cutting and welding because one, it's a waste. Two, is a bit dangerous because the new paint can sort of melt and catch fire or whatever. And three, um, it just makes it bloody awkward because if I've painted all that and then we've got to cut it, you're cutting through the paint and it's messy 
and you're trying to weld and it's going to splatter because of the paint whatever so I'm going to use some masking tape just to keep a clean area around where we're going to be cutting and welding in the future on this depot it's going to look a bit pants but um, it will make sense in the end So there we are, we're going to have a patch here that's not going to be painted and a line up here. It's a shame, I know, not to paint this piece. It's painted in primer so it's protecting it and it's not as if I'm going to be using the car like this. It's only going to be driven probably to Hereford to go and get these deposts done. So yeah, this just stops any of the stone chip getting on to the bits we're going to be cutting and welding in the future this is just this is just so satisfying i've just sprayed up in there underneath oh it looks great <laughs> no rust what a great feeling if only i could spray this magic shit on my depot <laughs> oh anyway back to it and I know this mask is rubbish for paint fumes, but it's all I've got. Garage is open, windows open. Let's go for it. But you've not seen my snazzy can spray thing before well I know Liz has because I sent one to her. one or two they're really handy just saves your thumb getting numb pressing on the thing you can use this I'll show you like your very own spray gun. pleased with how that looks and that's just one coat one more coat of stone chip it reckons one to two coats so I'll go for two coats we'll let that dry overnight and then I reckon what I normally do what I did with Peggy and Jessie is I then put a gloss coat of something on top of the stone chip because the stone chips very matte and um, so when you come to like I don't know wash it and stuff like that stuff is more likely to stick to matte than gloss so i'll put some gloss on top of the stone chip and then in the future any dirt or anything should just wash off easily and not not stick as much that's my plan anyway whether i'm right or not i don't know i'm no expert <laughs> 
I'm no expert, but I've done it a few times. Oh, ha, you found me. I'm in the shed. Well, these are the little clips here that hold on the fuel. Um, it's raining. These are little clips that hold the fuel breather pipes onto the inner wing I've just painted. I don't want to put a rusty old clip on that nice wing I've just painted. So um, I've just come up with a little can paint. I've wire brushed them on the vise. You weren't there for that. I don't know where you were. <laughs> but I'm just going to give these a little spray. Oh, sorry, that's a horrible noise on the camera, isn't it? I'm going to give these a little spray. Right, ignore the bog roll on the side. Uh, <laughs> I was just showing Raimi uh, a few of the things I've got for Mr Jenkins. This is the only piece of paperwork that came with the car and it's a sales invoice from 1970 and Mr Jenkins purchased Mr Jenkins, hence why he's called Mr Jenkins, now you know. Um, there was only two owners previous to me. One was Robert Roberts and one was Mr Jenkins. But I don't understand what Mr Jenkins was doing for the first few years of his life because he's 1967. It says here, one used rover. So was it a demonstrator for all those years? What's that, 68, 69, three years? Do you have demonstrators for three years? I have no idea. But Mr. Jenkins traded in his 1958 Morris for 125 pounds. <laughs> so he ended up paying 875 pounds. And plus 25 pounds for road tax. There we are. Like I say, I laminated it. Well, my friend Tony laminated it for me because it was just falling apart. And whilst I was in there, I found this magazine from October 2018. And right at the back, it says, in the next issue, Rover 2000. And I happen to have the next issue. <laughs> Front cover. Look at that. You didn't know Mr Jenkins was a cover star, did you? Let's see if we can find the page. There we are. Look at that. You can even see the rust on the wings and the bad panel gaps. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, nobody could leave comments in a magazine. So There's me looking dodgy, shifty. Some of the old pictures. Look, when I painted the inner wings last time. <laughs> they lasted over 10 years. Oh yeah, and the accident damage. The engine bay looks a lot tidier now. All this has been painted amongst my purple rocker cover. The interior's in good condition. It always has been, really. Oh look, I had the radio in the glove box then. It's not there anymore. There we are. Uh, he's worth saving, that cover star. <laughs> He'll be back in the magazines again. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I've just had tea and biscuits. Uh, <laughs> it's time to gloss over the stone chip now. I, tell you, I just want a light coat over it. I actually haven't got gloss. I've got satin, but it's better than matte like it is. You see the finish. I mean, I know you're not going to see this under the wing but it's quite rough and I don't know a bit bitty so I've just sprayed a little bit here to make sure it didn't react which is always a good thing and it hasn't reacted so that's nice so I'm just going to go for a light coat of this satin all over to help protect it mask on should put me a little uh my little spray thing on, that would be better, wouldn't it? Hang on. Oh! <laughs> we don't want to spray sideways, do we?
that's the uh, one coat that's all I've done one coat of well sort of two I went over the edges a bit of the um, satin black over the top of the stone chip so hopefully it gives it a bit more protection and dirt will wash off a lot easier now I get the uh, fun part of unwrapping everything like a massive Christmas present mm. Mm. I could reuse the paper, but it's all very dusty. I'm not reusing it. I've got loads. Of course, this is here, the sad bits where we're taking the masking off. <laughs> it's got to be done, got to be done. There's no point welding in this black stuff. I can see clearly now the tape has gone. <laughs> Gross. Did we have to uncover that again? It looks so nice over here. I don't want to look over there. Huh? And see my suspension's not that bad. I'll get my rag. And all that cleans up quite nice. Not that you're ever going to look under here. <laughs> 